Hi, I'm Estelle. I was born in a crazy family in New York. Please like and subscribe. My Mexican mom was so proud of her language that she never wanted to learn better English. Dad would say mean things with a smile to fool her all the time. And I hated it. Wow, this stew tastes like mud. What did you do to it, you insane woman? Dad? What are you telling me? Do you like? Woohoo! Mi contento. As a kid, I never had the courage to tell mom what a jerk he was, because I knew she'd be sad. But every time he did that and smirked at me, I knew that mom would soon catch on to his words, and it would end bad. And over time, mom learned more English from her neighbor friend, and she realized that all these years, dad had just been giving her hatred. Their fights got bigger, and one day when I was in the seventh grade, Mom finally decided she wanted a divorce. When I had to choose a parent, of course I chose Mom. We took off to Mexico that same night. Mom, are we going to Grandma's? Oh, mi amor. Grandma moved away a long time ago, but we have a new loving family here. A new family? The cab stopped at a huge mansion and a strange man ran towards us and hugged Mom. He also said something to me, but I didn't get a word. Mom then took me to her room and it was all ready for me. Mom, what's going on? Who's this man? As mom started telling her secrets one by one, I kept sinking deeper into the bed. That's Carlos, and he used to be my boyfriend long ago. If your grandma hadn't forced me to marry your dad, we would have been a big, happy family already. And you know what? He has a son your age, Matthew. What was I just hearing? Mom, I left my school, my friends, my whole life in New York for you. And you created your own family here and didn't even tell me about it? How could you keep all this from me? She kept explaining, but I just asked her to leave the room and slammed my door hard. It was so much to take in and I just wanted to cry. Suddenly, I heard a loud non-stop knocking on my door. Who is that? Okay, wait, stop that, I'm coming. I opened the door to find a boy standing outside, grinning at me. Who are you, man? Lost your way? Shouldn't I be asking you that? But your mama, well, now, our mama said, Matthew, go meet your sister. So here I am, hermana. What? Whatever it is, don't call me that. <laughs> mama didn't teach you Spanish? Also, I heard New Yorkers are very stylish. But uh, look at you, you're worse than my ex-girlfriend. Hey, that's a joke, okay? Don't cry. Can you do me a favor and please get the heck out of here? I made him leave, but he left <gasps> loads of mud on the carpet. That night at dinner, mom introduced me to everyone and Carlos even made a toast to me. But after that, they all started talking in Spanish. Was I invisible? I stood up to leave, but then mom held my hand. Where are your manners? We're having family time, Mia. Family? You all are clearly a family mama, excluding me. I don't even understand your language. Oh, no more. Just use the language of love. It's easy. Try it. Mom, can't you see? I feel so left out, but you're just joking about it. I shook her hand off and walked up to my room. The next day, I was joining school and thought at least that would give me some relief. Until Matthew came and sat right next to me. Holy moly. Hey, better not tell anyone we're related. And can you please wax your mustache? People will think you're me. It's not my problem you've got a girly face. He hit my face with a book and suddenly the teacher yelled, what's going on there? <laughs> Ma'am, can you believe it? She's asking me to be her boyfriend, but I told her, I already have eyes for you. I was sure the teacher was gonna kick him out now, but to my surprise, <laughs> she giggled. Oh, stop it, you. What? Who was this boy? Soon I realized Matthew was the coolest kid in school. All the girls and even the teachers adored him for his crazy jokes. Not me. I hated him even more because he spoke in Spanish with mom every time I was around. I felt like an alien in the house. That Christmas, Carlos was gonna host a grand party, but I wasn't interested. Um, I think I have an important exam that day, and in the evening, I have dance practice. Liar, we don't have any exams on Christmas. And dance practice? You can barely walk. Ugh, I was gonna kill him. Seeing mom and Carlos's faces, I could tell they wanted me to attend, so I reluctantly said yes. And the party wasn't that bad. I got to meet a handsome boy, Leo, and he was Carlos's business manager's son. Hey, 
I know you must already have a boyfriend because you're so pretty, but I have to say, you have the most dreamy eyes. I've been watching you for hours. OMG, that made me blush. Um, thanks. Actually, I don't have a boyfriend yet. We exchanged numbers and started hanging out. He seemed really cool. But one day when Leo and I were having lunch in the school cafeteria, Matthew appeared out of the blue and pulled me aside. Have you gone mad? Why are you sitting with that jerk? He's not a jerk. He's my friend. Maybe future boyfriend. And why do you care anyway? Listen, he's not a good guy. He flirts with everyone, and God knows how many girlfriends he has. Look who's talking. The one who flirts with teachers? Just leave me alone, okay? I can handle my own life. I knew he just wanted to spoil my first real relationship. So I ignored him and left with Leo. After that, we started going out more often. One evening, Leo invited me to his house for a party and I was having a great time. As we were dancing, Leo suddenly pulled me closer and my heart skipped a beat. Oh, hermosa. Thank God you flew all the way from New York just for me. He held my face and we kissed. Suddenly, someone kicked Leo hard and he went flying into a wall. Matthew, what are you doing here? Just protecting you from this virus. He took my hand and started walking out, but I pushed him away. You crazy idiot. You're the virus that's destroying my life. Why can't you just let me breathe? Breathe all you want, but see this first. He took out his phone and showed me Leo's Instagram page. It had a video of me and him kissing under the caption, 100th kiss from a New York chick. The page had videos of him kissing 99 other girls too. It looked like one of Leo's friends here had been making our video and was broadcasting it live for him. I jumped on Leo and scratched his face. Ah, the New York chick has gone crazy like her mad brother. Someone save me. Shut your dirty mouth. I trusted you, you mud mind. And I started pulling his hair like crazy. Matthew gave him a nice punch and then took me home. I felt really embarrassed for not listening to Matthew before. He'd only been looking out for me. So the next day at school, I sat next to him. Not so worried about this life-destroying virus now? Yeah, I realized it's better to have him as a friend than an enemy. I thanked him for the night before, and he just laughed and hit my face with a book again. As days passed, we became good friends. I also decided to talk to Carlos and Mom and apologize for being so neglectful, but they surprised me instead. Princessa, we have some exciting news for you. See, si, see, si, mija, your 15th birthday is coming in here in Mexico. We call it quinceañera. It's a grand family party. You'll love it, but why do you want to do this for me? You know, after I've been, well, not so nice. Because we're family, estupida. And you're no less than Matthew to me. I want to do this for my daughter. I felt so stupid for not seeing this before. These people really cared about me just like the family I'd always wanted. On the day of the party, I could already hear music and people laughing and talking as I got ready. I walked out all dressed in their traditional way and everyone clapped for me. Just then Matthew barged into the room looking mad. Stop the party, Papa. This girl doesn't deserve any of this love and attention. What? Matthew, calm down. Estelle is your nothing. She's my nothing, Papa. What's gotten into you, man? I was horrified when I saw what he had in his hand. It was my diary. Oh my God, no. After all this effort we've been making for you, this is what you really think of us? You suck. Matthew, enough. What are you talking about? Oh, let me read it out loud, Papa. This place is hell on earth. I hate their food, their language, this house. Carlos is so loud and annoying. Why is he so desperate to be my dad? Probably because his own son is a loser with half a brain. They're both stupid and I deserve better. There was a pin drop silence as everyone stared at me. You should have never taken my diary, you jerk. And yes, I, I wrote this, but that's when I first came here and I was having a really hard time adjusting. I was just mad and I didn't really mean it. This is not how I feel now. Carlos, mom, I promise, I really like being part of this family. You're not part of this family, Estelle, and you never will be. And before I could stop myself, I said the stupidest thing ever. Oh, shut up, Matthew. You're not part of this family either, because you're adopted. It was something mom had told me once, and Matthew didn't know about it. Now he did, because I just blurted it out. Carlos turned white, and mom looked raging mad. What a lame thing to say, Estelle. 
has if. Tell her, Papa. Papa? Why do you look like that? Oh, Matthew. I... I meant to tell you on your 16th birthday. I promise I was going to, son. Matthew looked stunned. Carlos walked over to him, but suddenly he just pushed him aside and ran out. Carlos went after him, while Mom turned to me. I raised you better than this, Estelle, but it seems you're more like your dad. Hurting good people for no reason. Hurting your family. I'm so disappointed in you. Party's over, everyone. As the guests started leaving, I ran to my room in tears. I felt terrible. Even if Matthew had read my diary, I'd done something ten times worse. And the next day, I was back to being the alien of the house. Nobody was talking to me, and I deserved it. Matthew wouldn't even look at me in school. Anytime I went near him, he walked the other way. I tried for days to make it up to him. One evening, I sneaked into his room, finished his history paper, and left it on his desk. When he came home, he took one look at it, tore it up, and threw it in the trash. Then, I had an idea for a gift that I was sure to make him forgive me. I used all my savings to get him a signed basketball from his favorite player. But when I looked into his room later, I was horrified to find him slashing it with a paper cutter. Oh my god, what are you doing? This was signed by- I don't care. I just want you to stop doing things for me and stay out of my face. How do I make you believe that I'm really sorry, Matthew? I'll- I'll say it in Spanish. Lo siento. Lo siento mucho. There's nothing you can ever say or do that will make things okay. Now please, get lost. It just looked like things were ruined between us for good. But one evening, I was walking a few blocks away from our house when I saw two boys wearing masks drag Matthew into an alley and start beating him up. I charged at them while screaming, and with the baseball bat I had, I hit one of the boys straight in the knee while the other one ran away. As he fell down, I pulled his mask off. Leo, don't you dare touch my brother again, estupida. I left him there crying on the ground and helped Matthew up. He leaned on me as we walked back home, and as soon as we entered, Mom and Carlos cried out. Oh my god, what happened? Papa, I'm fine, really, thanks to Estelle. But why were you going around with a baseball bat anyway? I've... I've been following you everywhere for days, Matthew. Leo came up to me a week ago and said he would do something to make you pay for exposing him at his party. I knew you wouldn't really listen to me, so I had to do something. I couldn't let you get hurt. I've done a pretty good job of that myself. Suddenly, Carlos stepped forward and hugged me. Mi amor, you saved my son today, and I want to forget everything else. I know you didn't mean those things. And I'm okay about knowing about the adoption, Estelle. It came as a shock, but Dad and I have talked a lot about it since, and I'm fine. It doesn't really change anything. You don't always have to be related to be family. I understand that now, and I'm so happy Mom brought me to you guys. I'm sorry about everything. And Carlos, you're the dad every girl wants to have. I... I love you. Carlos had tears and hugged me. Mom did too. Don't forget me.